as a sex worker. I remember one night, I was standing in a corner. It was very cold. It was raining when the client came and picked me up. When I go with this client, he opened the door and he pushed me inside and he closed the door. When I get in this house, there is seven guys. Six of them, they raped me. But one of them, he was smaller than all of them. He was the one why the guys are busy doing what they want, was crying. When they forced him to do it, he said, guys, I don't think so it's good what you're doing. Because she look older, she can't leave her children at home and risk her life. And it's windy outside, it's raining, it's cold. There is something pushing her to come in this night. I won't do it because I've been a long time not seeing my sister. Maybe it's happened to my sister. <laughs> it was amazing, but he ended up getting keys for car and take me back where the client was picked me up. worst things that in my experience Christians might do is to think that we can come in to save you um, and to save others uh, in the name of, of God. That we can do that because you can't do it for yourselves. What you can tell us in the stories of your lives is that you already know what it means to be saved. You already know what it means to be loved. You already know what it means to have surprising places where grace breaks in into your work and into your life far better than I can tell and far better than a theologian can tell. I note that religious leaders appear to be removed and disinterested in sex workers and their plight in this country. I note that religious leadership has perfected the art of ignoring problematic groups. We need to be empowering religious leadership to understand the dynamics of stigma and discrimination and vulnerability as it impacts on sex workers in South Africa. What does Islam say about sex outside marriage? they will immediately say it is haram. It is not permitted among the Shia Muslims. It's actually the phenomenon of temporary marriages, acknowledged, where the two parties say, I'm getting married to you for an hour. I'm getting married to you for two days. Or I'm getting married to you for half an hour. And this is the dowry that I, uh, that I pay. The people who should be speaking are not people like me, but people like you because you are the ones who can give the testimony of how God works in your life as someone who is a sex worker. The God said, there's no prostitute. All these people are mine. I don't judge a person. That's why I like God, even when I'm in the street, when I'm standing. I know we have difficulties, but I always pray, even when I jump in the car. I ask the price, but I always tell myself that God is there. There are ambiguities in our community about people doing things that in the law are haram, but we still respect them. So this spirit of God characterizes, is inherent in all human beings, regardless of what we do, regardless of our occupations, 
regardless of whether we have fallen or whether we have risen, whether we wear uniforms or don't, whether we have posh accents or don't have posh accents, regardless of, of what we do. This dignity is inherent in all human beings and this is, I think, what we need to fight to establish. I want everyone to listen this because God is in with me. We are doing a drama. We're using this drama all over. If you don't want me to arrest you, you know exactly what you're supposed to do, don't you? <laughs> you know exactly. You don't have nothing. Don't have money, 1,000 rand on you? Uh -uh, don't have nothing. You're wasting my time here. mothers, sex workers are fathers, their sisters, their brothers, sex workers are believers, and sex workers are faithful. So let's, as we move forward, always remember that. Viva sex workers, viva! Viva sex workers, viva! Viva sweat, viva! Viva Sisonga, viva! Waza, aswa, waza! Amanda! Amanda! <laughs>